Marlon, you are a two-time author and you're, you're a clarity coach. Um, in addition to running this business at Century IT, um, I want to talk to you about the two books, you know, The Ultimate Man and Ultimate You. Let's let's uh, I know that you're uh, you're really focused on, you know, uh, really helping everyone right now with The Ultimate You. That is your main priority. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this, you know, why did you write The Ultimate You? What was the purpose? What, what was the what was the catalyst that kick started this journey and said, "You know what? I want to share and I want to help everyone become a better person." What made you write the ultimate you? Man, great question, Chris. Thanks for asking me, man. You know, I had been stuck in just about every area of my life for about a decade. It felt my finances were stuck, uh, my my personal relationships, my family, my my career, my business, and just things have just gotten out of whack. And at different times, I would excel in one area, but in the other area, I would be like struggling. So I'm killing it at work, but my family is like struggling. I'm like, you know, what is going on here? And I had to take a, a step back and take take a be self-aware of what was going on and and understand that uh, I wanted to be me, but I wanted to be better. I wanted to take my life to the next level. So I went through like a, a decade of self-discovery, self-improvement, clarity for myself, just being self-aware of what I wanted in my life, how I was going to get it, why I wanted it, and what was the process I was going to take to get it without sacrificing other areas of my life. Because I didn't want to just excel in one area and, you know, another area at the sacrifice of another area. Like that was not it for me. I am a, a high achiever and I'm not complacent. Like I can't be complacent with where I am. I always have to go. I always have to be better. There's always room for improvement. And as I was going through my journey and I started talking with people. So I, I did every leadership conference. I did every, you know, the gurus, the Tony Robbins out there, the conferences, you know, I did all that. I read all the books and podcasts. I was like a sponge for like a decade. And then when you're a sponge and you collect all this and somebody squeezes you, it just starts coming out, right? All this self-improvement, oh, this is what I'm doing. And I just started sharing it with people and people were finding value out of it. And that resonated with me. And I was like, and I just started helping people out. And then I started kind of coaching people when I, before I was even a coach. And I was like, man, I, and I told you before, like I have a passion for serving people in every capacity, both professionally and personally. And I wanted people to embrace this journey that they were about to uh, embark on um, self-improvement. Again, being you, but better. What, what is a version 2.0 of CJ looks like, you know, and helping them develop and craft a plan. And basically what I did with this book was I basically created a cheat code for my 10 years of education and discovery. And I put it in a book, right? Because I wanted other people and other people kept asking me. And I was like, okay, so here's the steps that I took. This is what my journey looked like. Everybody's journey is unique because everybody is very independent and very different, right? But this is the framework I use. This is the process I went through. This was the journey that I went on and how it, I became what I would consider my ultimate self, like the ultimate you, you know? And again, I just wanted to be me but better. And no matter where I am, I always want to be better. I, there's always room for improvement. You know, if you look at, and, and through this process, I actually look at my life and rate it from a, a one to 10. Where am I? Right. And my goal is I want to be an eight, nine or 10 in every area of my life. You know, whether that's my physical health, my mental health, my finances, you know, business, you know, career, whatever it is, I want to be an eight, nine or 10. And I'm a very hard critic of myself uh, when I when I come to measure it. But so and I'm never a 10. Right. So because there's always room for improvement. And so when I started writing this book, uh, it was really to. Gear, it was geared towards high achievers who really wanted to take their life to the next level. Right. They weren't complacent with where they are from the outside looking in. People would say they have a perfect life, but they have their own failed expectations for themselves. So not somebody else having ex expectations for them. It's their own failed expectations. They're just not where they want to be in a certain area of their life. And it really walks them to through with a, a fine-tuned comb and 
taking an analysis of that area of their life and helping them walk through the process of understanding what that block was for them, what that block is that is preventing them from being to where they want to be. And that's what the book really does. It helps them identify that and break through it. Breakthrough is the key, right? Because they've been they've been acting a certain way for so long because of something that's happened to them from their childhood, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, a kid teased them when they were young and they have their subconscious has been holding on to that for 10, 20, 30, 40, sometimes even 50 years. And it's been holding them back from everything that they've ever wanted. And it affects every area of their life. You got to look at your, 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 your life as a whole. You can't compartmentalize everything, right? Mm-hmm. And so you may have one segment of your life that's struggling and that actually affects every aspect of your life. Guess what? If, you're, if your marriage is failing or you're, you're, you're really struggling, do you think that affects you professionally? Yeah. You think it affects how you interact with your children? Yeah, it does. You think it affects your finances? It definitely does. I know I'm speaking from experience, right? Uh, but yeah, so that's that's why I wrote the book because I really wanted to help high achievers that are very critical and hard on themselves, but they want to take their life to the next level. And this is just a guide. It's a it's a, a framework for them to follow to do that. Just that. Be them, wow. but only better. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so many... <laughs> So many jewels. <laughs> you were dropping, you were dropping them on them. I mean, you know, I, I wrote, I mean, my I got like four or five pages of notes. Um, I mean, I circle breakthrough, right? I yes. circle, you know, uh, uh, you know, you said, Hey, I gave the cheat code. You know, this is, you know, I went through the pain, so you don't have to go through the pain. Right. Um, you can learn from the you can learn from me, and I'm giving you the cheat code 10 years to steal to this book so that you can become the ultimate you and the ultimate you is the version of success that you see where you're operating at eight or nine because you're striving in the pursuit of excellence to get the 10. I mean, that's just, that's rich. And so through it, during this, you know, you, you, you came along a, 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 a path, the clarity and you wanted to, not only when you were writing a book, you talked about, you know, helping you, you said clarity a, a few times. And so, you know, you, you became a clarity coach. Yes. Why a clarity coach specifically versus some other type of coach? What is about clarity that you said, you know what, this is what people, I believe this is what people need. I know what helped me. I wonder if it can help other higher achievers or other people out there. Right. You know, a great question. Thanks for asking. So wow, clarity is so important. It's vital to our success. You know, you want to take your life to the next level. A lot of times you don't even know what that level is. When I, when I work with my coaching clients for, for clarity coaching, it's, they, they know they're not where they want to be. They know that without a doubt, but they don't know how to get to that next level. They don't know what that next level is. I have had people that have worked their way up the corporate ladder to the highest degree, the highest position, and come to find out, they climbed up the wrong damn ladder. They worked their way up to the top, but that's not even what they want to do. So they spent 20, 30 years building this career, building this experience, but they're not passionate about it. It doesn't give them anything. It was just something they did, and they strive to be better at it, right? But they're in the, they're in the wrong. It's not passionate about it. They don't like what they're doing. So how frustrating is that to make it to where, where you want it, where you thought you wanted to be and realize that's not it. That's not it. What about people who strive for money, right? I just want to make more money. That's going to be the yeah. answer to all my problems. That's what they believe, mm-hmm. but they make it to the top. They make it to their financial goals, but they lose their family because they have no relationship with their children. Oh, they, you, they lose their wife because they spent all their time working, uh, you know, getting all this, amassing all this wealth, right? But they have no relationships with their family. Are they winning? You know, no, they're not. And it, it's it's clarity that really looks at their life, looks at their purpose. What are they, what are they passionate about? What are you what are you purposeful about? What are, what brings you life? You know, what energizes you? You know, Finding that clarity and, and what I what I typically do before we actually look at people's lives, we have to do a self-discovery 
session with them. And I'm not talking about one session. I'm talking about a period of time. It's like a, it's like a getting an MBA in you, right? Who are you to the core of who you are? Not, not who Joe Blow told you, not who your boss told you, not who your spouse tells you or your parents tell you are. Who are you, right? A lot of people don't know who they are outside of their, their titles, their, their roles, their responsibilities. Who are you? When your kids graduate and are off on their own and you're empty nesters, who are you left with? Who are you? What do you want to do? And so we take a, a, a real deep self-discovery. We have a whole process that we take for 90 days going through this, this process of understanding who you are, right? And we create a life plan based off of that. And we understand what, what, you're, what are you motivated by? Why do you want to succeed in so many different areas? What your purpose is? What's your passion about? What are your hobbies? What do you enjoy doing outside of work and responsibilities and titles? You know, and we really do a self-discovery process like no other. And again, the only way I can describe it as having an MBA in yourself, right? And if you're going to spend all this time learning this and going to school or doing that, why not do the same amount for you? I mean, you're worth it, right? So why would you not, why would you put that on the back shelf? And a lot of times, especially as, you know, you're raising family, raising kids and life is just happening. We always put ourselves on the back burner. Oh, I've got this dream, right? Uh, but this dream has been deferred because life has been happening. Life has been going by and we have put all our dreams, all our hopes, all our aspirations on the back shelf. Well, maybe one day. Well, one day, someday never comes, right? And so we walk them through the process of identifying what those dreams are, tapping back into those dreams, and then going to get those dreams like with an aggressive hunger like never before, because you are important. Your dreams, your hopes, your aspirations are very important to who you are becoming and who you are designed to be. No matter what you believe, God or whatever, whatever higher power, like you were designed for a purpose. What is that purpose? We have to tap into that to be the ultimate version of ourselves. Bottom line. Woo. Hey, man, that stove is hot and we cooking. <laughs> I mean, you know, we cooking. It, it, I, it's Thanksgiving dinner. It's Christmas dinner. It's Easter <laughs> dinner. You know, it's a dinner that we feed the whole community right now with what you just said, just so you know. <laughs> I, 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 I want to go to something that, you know, you said you, you talked about money, but I want to go a little bit deeper because there is something within the ultimate you with part of the NBA and you, the 90 days, you know, we talk about the motivation, the purpose, self-discovery and the motivation of it. You have a different saying about money and it talk about money and options, right? Yes. You know, can you, can you, can you, can you share that? You know, what, what, you know, what does money give for you? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for asking me that. You know, you know, a lot of people want wealth and, you know, to, just get things and to live in their dream house, their dream cars and travel the world. I want money. I want wealth for the options that it brings to our lives, right? You know, so if my kids want to go to a certain university, I don't want money to be an issue. Sorry, son, you can't go because of this. Money gives you options, right? And that's the most important thing. And I never want money to prevent me from chasing something that I want to achieve, something that I want to do, right? So that is my motivation behind money is the options it brings to my life, not the things, right? I never want to have a roadblock. When we talk about roadblock, you know, you know, you, you know the environment that that I grew up in. Like it wasn't wealthy. You know, my mom was a school teacher, single, single mom, a school teacher. We didn't have much, we had enough, right? for us to, to live our lives and grow up the way we, we grew up. And so it's not like, I don't want money to give my, my kids a better lifestyle because I had everything I needed, but I never want money to be a roadblock to achieving something that is deep down inside of me that I need to do part of my purpose, part of my passion. Like that, that is why wealth and money is important to me for the options it brings to my life. Man, I love that. Love that. 
And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so, you know, it's so important because it's not about chasing the money. It's that it's not about chasing that itself. It's about giving yourself the options, right? So that you can decide what's best and that you're not restricted because you don't have those options. Right. I, I like that a lot. So let me ask you this. I mean, you, you know, you, you, you lead two thriving companies, you know, you're a husband, you know, you're a father, how, you know, we only got 24 hours in a day. And, uh, and, and I know that you're very, you know, disciplined because you work out, you know, we talked about that earlier, you know, you're like, Hey, it's not only just mental clarity it's physical clarity as well. And also in the pursuit of your goals and you're a high achiever, how do you manage all of that to the best of your abilities to be the ultimate you, because you are the example of what the ultimate you as you're moving to that ultimate point. Man, Chris, thank you for asking. I, I'm going to break it down to one simple word answer, and then I'm going to I'm going to break it down a little bit more and give give you some some nuggets here. So my one word answer is intentionality. Right. People ask me all the time, family, friends, like, how are you doing all of this? I don't understand. I can't even visualize what your day looks like or how are you doing this? And I'm one that operates in silence. So when I'm 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 writing my book as an example, and then all of a sudden, I just published a book, right? But they don't see the work that was behind the scenes doing all that. For every everybody that is a you know uh, a success, overnight success, has ten years of history of work behind the scenes that nobody else sees, right? Uh, so when I say intentionality uh, as my short answer, but my long answer is I develop a system. I have a personal operating system for success that I use and that I create for my life, for every area of my life that we've already talked about. And I break it down to why, what is my ultimate goal in this area of my life? So my, my physical life, what is my ultimate goal? And I break it down to why is that my goal? Why do I want that? You know, so when I don't feel like going to the gym, I don't feel like working out. What is it that's going to drive me to keep going, right? That's going to motivate me to remind me the purpose behind why that's my goal, right? And then I say, all right, so this year, how am I going to get one step closer to my ultimate goal in my physical health, my finances? What What is my outcome this year that I want to achieve? So I map that out for a year in advance. And then I said, okay, this is my outcome I want. And outcomes are different than goals. So this is my outcome I want. So what are my goals that I need to achieve this year in that area of my life? And then I map it out. And then I break it down like a business, bro. Like Q1, I'm going to do this. Q2, I'm going to do this. Q3, I'm going to do this. Q4, I'm going to do this to get to the outcome I want for this year. And do that year after year after year. It gets you to that ultimate goal. Right. And so I'm living my life with intentionality. I'm not just letting life happen to me. I'm taking life by the horns and telling it what's about to happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? So so that's how I I, I use this. I create a plan. I have a blueprint for success for every area of my life. And I'm following and I'm tracking with I have metrics against like, you know, I'm the CEO of myself. Mm -hmm. Right. So I got to I got to treat. I, I, like, I need to treat myself like I would one of the businesses that I'm running because I have goals and aspirations and targets that I want to get to. And I don't want to just, you know, one day retire or be on my deathbed and wish like, oh, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have had a better relationship, you know, with my spouse or with my kids. Like, no, I'm going to be intentional about that now. I'm going to start living the life that I want to leave now. I'm going to live my legacy now. By being intentional and disciplined about what I want out of my life. Love it, man. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Where can people follow you, find your book? You know, where, 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 can, where can they get access to the ultimate you? Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, MarlinGrigsby.com. Uh, it's my website. You can get access to the books there. Uh, the books are also on Amazon. So you can search my name, Marlon Grigsby, or you can search the titles, The Ultimate You or The Ultimate Man. 
Uh, you can find the books that way. I would love if you go ahead and purchase and leave leave some good reviews for me, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, but you can reach out to me there on social media, Marlon at Marlon Grigsby. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, again, LinkedIn, uh, Threads, X, and uh, Facebook, Marlon Grigsby. I would love to help you out. I have some free resources for you on my website. Uh, and there's also a way we can book a call with me, a, a quick 15 minute consultation and just, Hey, tell me what you're struggling with in your life. And I'll help hopefully frame it in, a, in a, such a way that you can, uh, get some clarity, get a breakthrough, or even just an aha moment in 15 minutes. And I've done this enough and worked with enough people that that is totally possible. If you're struggling in an area of life, reach out to me. I would love, I would love to talk with you about whatever it is that's going on in your life. and how we can get you some clarity to break through to get to the ultimate version of yourself. Man, this has been a great conversation. You know, um, I've known you for quite some time. It's been de several decades. We we met, you know, in our teen teenage years as we were trying to uh, become, we were, we were boys trying to become young men. Then we became men and now family, family men and whatnot. And, you know, I think of it in this way, you know, Dre hat, Snoop, you know, uh, uh, what can I say? You know, Kevin Hart has the Plastic Cup Boys. You know, Oprah has Gail. You know, the RZA has Wu-Tang. <laughs> Big Boy has Andre 3000. And we have been blessed that we got, you know, Trey, Dre, Maul, Gage, right? Reese, Cole, yes. me, you, right? Absolutely. You know, and so it's been it's been a blessing to share your story and your conversation. And uh, it's been great. Until the next time, we'll be talking to you with another combo with CJ. Peace. If by Rue Your Kipling, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired of waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated, don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth the distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son, if I rule your kipper. Peace.